The only way you get innovation in this space is by taking risks and trying new things. And often we say something's risky because we can't measure it. And because we struggle with measuring the results or some tangible result, we then say it's, it's high risk. Often at a gut feeling, we know it's the right thing to do. Um, and we struggle with navigating that because it doesn't fit into our strategy or it doesn't fit into some log frame somewhere or we worry that it's not going to pan out the way it should pan out. I think that makes for the best learning and often the most exciting grants when we do things that we're not really sure of the outcome. I think when we're really sure of the outcome of what we're doing we tend to play it safe and do the safe work. I've learned the most in my grant making life from the grants that have gone horribly wrong. I haven't learned much from the grants that have gone right. And so I think it's changing the culture of philanthropy to recognize that when you as a philanthropist operate from a premise that you know all the answers and we know what's right, then it's hard to embrace failure. If as a philanthropist you engaging saying, I actually don't know if this is gonna work. I'm gonna be guided by the sector and I'm gonna take risks, but I'm always gonna do it in a thoughtful way and I'm going to interrogate what the possible consequences are. Um, the level of um, risk, I always think that is what is unique about philanthropy, is the level of risk. Philanthropists are not accountable to voters, they're not accountable to shareholders and it's often that risk that philanthropy can inject into society or a particular project that leverages growth. the best way to manage risk is relationships. And so close relationships with the groups that um, we fund is the first important uh, quality of managing risk. Um, so when you know grantees, when you engage with the thought processes, when you debate issues and understand how they are organizing, both the opportunities that are presented to them and the obstacles. Uh, that is the first big step of managing risk. A lot of Atlantic's grantees, they would say that Atlantic was quite hard to get money from and that they were put through the hoop uh, really in a pretty intensive way. Um, so I think part of, if that's true, and I think it probably is true, that was part of the um, effort to minimise risk. It was that you do do your homework, you do look at this, you do look into every aspect of these organisations, you look at their leadership, you look at their finances, you look at how they're perceived, you look at the quality of their plan, um, you, you look at what other donors think, you, you, you make sure that the uh, that the political landscape, you know, that if people are saying they're going to do this, is it feasible? Um, and you take a lot of soundings. So I think that was probably one of the key elements to trying to address the issue of risk. Uh, on, the, on the other side of that then, I think people would probably say, grantees would probably say that once you got the money, um, you weren't micromanaged. <laughs> Um, and that Atlantic was relatively um, relaxed then about, um, about how you did what you did. And you know, if you think about that, that's basically people have checked you out and then they placed their confidence in you and then they left you to it. I mean, I think the vision for the work in South Africa was similar in many respects to the vision for the whole foundation. So the mission of the foundation is to make a lasting difference in the lives of disadvantaged and vulnerable communities. There are sort of, I think, two main elements to that. One is who are the disadvantaged and vulnerable? Um, and the second is how can you make lasting change? So you, you know, that tells you who you might work with and it tells you something about the character of work that you might have to do. So you know, it, it, it tells you, for example, that providing services to people um, isn't probably going to make the lasting change. It's going to ameliorate the conditions. So, you know, that kind of mission leads you to things about, you know, what are the root causes of some of these problems um, and what kind of systemic uh, things can you do that would actually make a lasting difference. 
Atlantic Philanthropies, in a sense, demonstrated for me a real ethic of activist grant making in South Africa. And part of what was one of the key features of that was allowing the activists on the ground to determine the work that was to be done. And so that requires a hell of a lot of risk taking. And that requires not being hell bent on log frames and being able to count and tick off the boxes of how we're going to measure the change that we're going for. But a much more fluid and open and iterative process of supporting activism on the ground. And I think that um, is a grant making practice that has set a very high bar. I mean, there was accountability. You had to report back on what you'd done. But the emphasis wasn't on that. The emphasis was on the quality of what you were doing and, and the value system and the enthusiasm. And, and somehow there's often a disconnect between organizations there to assist with enthusiasm, happiness, joy, ebullience. They so do in their manner of doing everything, they just kill that sense of initiative, that sense of adventure. Atlantic has always been willing and has funded core expenses. And so that has meant that we could use funding to pay for operational costs, to pay for overheads, as well as to use that money for projects and campaigns. And not many funders are willing to do so. I think it's not so much about risk that funders are risk averse. I think it's more around being comfortable with failure. When you take risks, you have to know that you're going to fail. So you could take 10, do 10 risky grants and maybe three are going to pan out the way you wanted it to pan out and seven aren't. And often funders aren't comfortable with that. It's not that when you take a risk and you do a grant that's a risky grant that you're going in blind. So I think it's about calculating what the risks are. And if you're always going to play it safe, you're going to have a very nice, neat portfolio of grants but you're not going to get to the edges and you're not going to get to that innovation that often happens at the edges and that's often the hardest grants to do. I think the way Atlantic gave was a wonderful, wonderful creative understanding of the role of civil society and the fact that we are working in a very fast changing society and so that all the well-meant plans in the world often have to change and it really depends on organizations and their leadership to change as required.